Hey everyone, and welcome back to Shapeshifter's Den, a place where we discuss all things related to self-transformation through conscious movement. Today's video will be the first in a new series I've decided to call Level Up. These videos will discuss specific and actionable concepts which directly level up your ability to be the conscious creator of yourself and your individual life experience. In this video, we will be addressing one of the most basic and powerful ways in which a person can increase the efficiency and functionality of the body and mind, and that would be nasal breathing. Now, nasal breathing is simply breathing through your nose as opposed to your mouth. And it seems simple, but it's often overlooked in large part because most people don't realize the drastic differences between the two types of breathing. So what follows will be a highlight of some of the more important differences. Difference number one is oxygen. This gaseous molecule provides our cells with the fuel needed to bring vitality and life to the body. In fact, human life can only exist for a matter of minutes without oxygen. When oxygen-rich air passes through the mouth, it mostly ends up in the upper lobes of the lungs, causing a pattern known as chest breathing, and in turn reducing the surface area inside of the lungs which is available to absorb the oxygen. Conversely, when air passes through the narrow slits of the nose, its turbulence is increased, driving air deeper into the lower lungs and increasing the surface area available for the lungs to absorb oxygen. This type of breathing is often called belly breathing. But in short, nasal breathing is increasing your vitality by increasing your oxygen absorption. Which leads us to difference number two, stamina. Because nasal breathing increases how much oxygen is absorbed per breath, this means that fewer breaths are needed in order to get the same amount of oxygen. This means saving more energy doing the same work as someone breathing primarily from the mouth. In addition to a more efficient use of the lungs, nasal breathing also releases nitric oxide into the air that you're inhaling. And once in the lungs, this nitric oxide enters the bloodstream and begins to open up the blood vessels of the body, allowing more blood, oxygen, and nutrients to enter muscles during exercise. This means more fuel available to the muscles and better waste removal for muscle breakdown, both of which increase stamina. Difference number three is posture and bone structure. It's hard to oversell the importance of this difference and it's honestly a shame it's not more widely known because it can make a world of difference for pain and performance issues. Breathing is basically just an internal movement pattern, one which the average person performs nearly 20,000 times per day. This is an incredible amount of repetition and any faults in the pattern tend to drastically affect the whole. When breathing through the nose, the naturally increased air turbulence drives air into the lower lungs, more fully activating the diaphragm. This has the effect of increasing intra-abdominal pressure underneath the diaphragm, helping to stabilize the core and promote tall, healthy posture. Breathing through the mouth, however, decreases intra-abdominal pressure, leaving the core less supported. This often causes the midsection to collapse forward, such as in sway back posture or causing the core to collapse backwards, flaring the ribs out and further weakening the diaphragm and the abdominals. This has long-term drastic effects on the posture, making the person more susceptible to injury and chronic musculoskeletal pain patterns. The second major postural issue caused by mouth breathing can be found in the face and has a lot to do with what is normally considered an attractive facial structure. For when breathing through the mouth, the mouth must remain open. This alters the muscles used for breathing and creates a recessed jaw. The recessed jaw partially closes off the airways, making breathing even harder and slowly changing the entire structure of the face. The jaw becomes more narrow, cheekbones become less defined, and if present during childhood, this often causes crooked teeth. In contrast, nasal breathing allows the mouth to remain shut, keeping the jaw in its proper posture, opening the airway, and allowing the face and teeth to develop normally. Difference number four is recovery. Inside the lungs are many nerve receptors, which are stimulated by the air we breathe in. The upper lobes of the lungs are full of sympathetic nervous system receptors, which when activated by the upper chest breathing pattern, will create a fight, flight, or freeze response in the body. This is basically chronic hyperventilation and leads to anxiety and excess stress, reducing the body's ability to optimally heal and recover after strenuous exercise. Conversely, nasal breathing pushes air into the lower lobes, which are full of parasympathetic nerve receptors. Activating these receptors activates the rest, digest, and recover response from the body, leading to a feeling of ease and triggering the body's natural healing responses. In fact, if you maintain nasal breathing during exercise, your body will have a near equal sympathetic and parasympathetic response, meaning your body is in the healing response even while you're breaking down muscle. And likewise, nasal breathing after exercise increases parasympathetic activation and continues to speed healing leading to faster recovery and increased gains. And finally, my personal favorite effect of nasal breathing is mental presence. Mouth breathing, due to the increased fight or flight response and decreased oxygen and nutrient absorption, 
causes low energy and a general feeling of anxiety. This makes the body a fairly uncomfortable place to be and the mind often tends to wander off because of it. And a mind which is spaced out and not very present in the body has little control over the body and little awareness of its environment. Overall, it's a recipe for low effectiveness within the life experience itself. Now, nasal breathing increases oxygen and nutrient uptake, increasing the energy available for cognition. And on top of this, the activation of the parasympathetic nervous system relaxes the body, making it a more pleasant and comfortable vehicle for the mind. Together, this creates an alert but relaxed mental presence within the body. This mental presence increases the mind's ability to control the body, as well as vastly increasing the mind's potential for environmental awareness both of which will boost the individual's efficiency and effectiveness in nearly all aspects of their life experience. So how does one properly breathe through the nose? Well, for some people this pattern is and always has been present, but for those who have a long history of mouth breathing, it can be difficult in the beginning to alter this pattern. However, with a little patience and consistency, it becomes much easier and eventually becomes habit. The practice of retraining the breathing pattern is often called mewing. Mewing involves closing the mouth during breathing and placing the tongue in its natural position on the roof of the mouth, just behind the front teeth. Breathing through the nose with the tongue in this position activates the proper breathing muscles and opens up the airways. Over time, this pattern will alter the structure of the face, moving the jaw into its proper place and building up the facial and neck musculature in a more natural pattern. A nice bonus is the more attractive jawline and facial structure this creates. To maximize the retraining of the breathing pattern, you'll have to ensure that the diaphragm is being properly activated. Standing relaxed but tall and breathing into the belly and lower ribs is helpful for this. Check in a mirror and try to be sure your lower rib cage is expanding gently in 360 degrees as you inhale. Once these positional cues are in place, simply practice breathing this way as much as possible throughout the day. Eventually it will become second nature. However, the mouth is the emergency breathing system of the body and if at any point you can't breathe through the nose, simply breathe through the mouth while still trying to use the diaphragm properly. Return to nasal breathing whenever you're able. If you're stuffed up a lot, consider removing certain items from your diet to see if it changes. In my experience, dairy, wheat, and soy tend to cause mucus buildup and inflammation in a lot of individuals. Though the only way to know this for sure is to eliminate one at a time from your diet for a week or so and see if your breathing gets any better. Well, that's it for today. I hope you found the discussion helpful. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to send some love by clicking the like button. If you have any questions or if you'd like to share your own experience or advice, feel free to leave a comment below. Until next time, good luck with your breathing patterns, and keep moving everyone.